Greetings, mortals. We are back in Rise to Ruins, and the Empire grows a little bit more. Now, we have the landfill, which is being vaguely armed. I would not really want a landfill, because, of course, now we have resources here we don't really need, but there you go. So, at this stage, you have, like, a mining facility, facility and a lumber shack. You don't really need the mining facility at this stage, but it's there to help stuff get going. You do, of course, will need boards. You, of course, need water. I do recommend, if you can, and have a spare slot or two available, get yourself a rain catcher. And obviously, you don't really need them too much, but a rain catcher, of course, can help a fair bit in catching rain whenever it rains. Because that becomes pure water. You don't need to purify it. It just straight up becomes pure drinking water. But again, you have to keep an eye on your building couch. Now... I do recommend eventually getting more defences up and running, and I do recommend trying to get crystal stuff going on, because you can get golems up and running. Now, the towers, you should be getting a few more towers up and running once you've noticed where the enemy is primarily coming from, which will be down here. But again, you'll be wanting defences. Walls should be on your trajectory at this point in time. The problem with walls, which people don't seem to realise straight away, is they block line of influence. The influence being this a green area. If you can't see it, because it's not in your influence, you can't build on it. So if you build a wall here, oops, yeah, build a wall along here, you might not be able to build buildings here. So you have to keep an eye on how that goes. Now, last I checked, you can build fire pits. Fire pits extend the range. And the enemy doesn't really attack them, so you can use fire pits, which do count as buildings, so they will use a building slot, to extend your range outside of walled defensive positions without losing important buildings. So there is ways of getting around it, but you will start needing to wall off certain areas. Now, what you need to do is see what other resources you need and what you're low on. It shouldn't be too much if you picked a good spot. Like over here, you wouldn't have trees unless you walked a long way. And you'd have to walk even further for water. So you'd have to obviously go that way. But you want to see where things are. Now, oops. There are abandoned buildings on the map. You can destroy them for resources in your area. Like I'm going to now. Because I need a few more buildings. There we go. Another thing you need to do is be prepared for the enemy getting more powerful. They will start... Let's get another standard house. Let's get two more standard houses. They will start sending more powerful units and more higher leveled units. The higher the level, the more damage they can take and give out. Now we have mag magic over here, so we can start using magic. In our arsenal of defensive towers, we have a few magic towers. The elemental bolt tower, which actually uses crylithium, the refined crystal. It uses boards, so it's quite expensive. But we do have static towers. They use just use boards. A static tower is an area of effect. It does like a pulse around it. So you can use those. And you also have phantom dart towers. Phantom dart towers are the cheapest, easiest to build tower in the game. And they use magic. So you can build a couple in here. The enemy won't attack. Well, let's try to get at least one thing put on for some health. So you can do that. But yeah, you can put phantom dart towers everywhere. And if you have a magic storage like you should have, but you don't have too much in the way of golems yet because you're still building up, I recommend getting a few phantom dart towers down. Now, I'd also recommend slowly upgrading all the buildings you have bit by bit. Now, so you have the resources, upgrade them. I definitely recommend upgrading the farms so you hit the board levels. Then, of course, you'll need to get a makeshift lumber mill. I recommend upgrading the... Uh, Water purifier as well, so it can store more water, as you can see right now, it's got a lot. And I also recommend, if you can, upgrade the towers, but they will require boards. And I'd only recommend upgrading them if you're quite happy where they are, or you're having a major attack and you need extra damage. But yes, once you get buildings in places you like, I recommend upgrading them as and when you can. We have a child somewhere. They will level up and become real people eventually. Right now, they're not real people, they're children. But yeah, build what you can, when you can, and upgrade as and when too. Also help out your people, like, if you don't have anything grabbing crystal, it's nice to grab the stuff for your people, so don't spend, like, an extra 10 seconds grabbing it themselves by mining it. So help out as and when. 
As you can see over here, the mining facility is doing well. We've got plenty of wood, plenty of stone mobile right now. Which is helping us out immensely for the upgrades. But of course, we do need to keep on grabbing some more stuff. We are very low on the wood. Let's grab it here. There we go. So you can see we're grabbing it. We've got some more wood down over here. Our people will path over and grab it. We have more housing spaces available. And of course, we'll be getting this phantom dart tower, which I'm upgrading to the top because I kind of want it active. It doesn't do much damage. It in any way, shape or form does not do much damage. To actually use a lot of these, you're going to need a lot of these. In a group. They fire kind of slow, and they don't do much damage whatsoever. But if you say you have a maze set up, they will obviously do a lot more damage. Now, when you're building walls, there are two things you need to be aware of. The enemy will path through the quickest route towards your town centre, or if they hit by, get hit by a tower, they'll path towards the tower. If you completely lock off the outside, they will pick the path of least resistance, which might be your walls. They will not attack the walls if they can path to your base. If the path is exceedingly long, they might still try and break your walls. So you have to kind of balance it out. You want to try and get, keep their attention going and also keep on hitting them. Also, if you ever need any more mana, you can go over your essence collector like this and it will give the essence it has to you. There we go. Now, like I say, I recommend getting some Phantom Dart Towers up. I definitely recommend getting some Bow Towers active. Getting some Bow Towers is good, because, of course, they just require ammo. And if you suddenly run out of Essence at any point in the game, you might be buggered if all your towers suddenly shut down. Also, the same thing, of course, if you run out of ammo, but at least they can store it. So, it's a good to have a mixture of Bow Towers and Magic Towers to start off with. There are, of course, Ballista Towers, which fire further. And there's also the stone throwing towers. Bullet towers. They need a rock tumbler to fire. A rock tumbler just takes rocks and turns them into um, ammo for them. Bullet towers are extremely fast firing. Each rock is about 100 ammo. And they fire a bit like a machine gun. But they're very short range. You also have, if it's still here, let's have the sling tower. The sling tower is kind of like a catapult. Only, instead of firing over walls, it fires in a straight line. So the sling tower cannot fire over walls. So you have to practice having that at, like, gaps and gates and so on. Um, the spray tower is basically an even faster firing machine gun. Maybe this one has the 100 on it, actually, now I think about it. 300 ammo per bundle. So this one does 1 to 2 damage per shot, but it fires insanely fast. That's a huge, huge amount of ammo. But you'd need like several of these to do any serious damage. These are obviously designed for your first wave stuff like Headless and Slimes. Zombies are tougher and slower. Skeletons, because their skeletons actually take less piercing damage. So bow towers are terrible against skeletons. So you do occasionally need some magic towers to back them up or say a spray tower or two. But of course right now I don't have the ammo capacity to make those. So I don't have... A tumbler. So I'm going to have to upgrade this and see how it goes. Or I could build myself an ancillary. Maybe I should. Let's just destroy this bit over here. This needs to go away. Okay, the makeshift rain catcher has been built. We don't have anyone here. Let's actually set a carpenter up and running for that. I will be needing more people in the lumber shack because, of course, the lumber shack is highly important because nearly every building requires some form of wood. Oh, that's what the lag was, a sudden save. Okay. Now, going to Phantom Towers needs energy, it's now being told. You'll suddenly see energy powering across. You can't grab this, it's already been chosen. But as you can see, it's flying across, powering it up. And there you go, it's 4 to 6 damage. Now, I can upgrade it again, which I'm going to. And that should help out. So, one of the things we need to do is um, make sure every building is where we want it to be and we are building up. I'd like to make sure we have plenty of space in our housing. I usually go for at least six houses and upgrade them and then see how many we need. Because people are your most important resource, of course. So always make sure you have like six or so houses. It's your choice where you put them. I usually put them in a square like this so I can build a wall around them. You don't have to do that. It's just how I've always done it. I always build walls around my base. You can, of course, build gates. Which means it's harder for enemies to get in because they have to break down the gates. But gates count as buildings. Walls do not count as buildings, but gates do. 
So you're building a gated community literally, you'll have to factor in even more building space. But yeah, always make sure you have um, a mixture of magic towers and some kind of physical tower. Oh, my cat just came and immediately sneezed. But yeah, you got to make sure you have all that stuff prepared. And you should be good to go for the first few nights. Your major test will be when you start coming up against fire elementals. Fire elementals throw fire. They are ranged. Now they can fire, if you can shoot at them over a wall, they can shoot back over a wall. So you kind of have to make sure you're in a position where they won't take out some of your houses or so on. Ghosts are extremely powerful creatures. The phantoms, they have multiple thousands HP and they can just fly straight through your defences, you've got to be careful of them. Slimes, when you kill them, they actually split, so a big slime will split into a smaller slime, so sometimes the slimes will spawn over your walls. Not too much of an issue unless, you know, you're busy trying to wipe out everything else and suddenly there's slimes eating your towers. As you can see, food seems to be gathering pretty nicely. We still only have one person grabbing it. We now have a lot of spare food he is now grabbing to fill this house. That's perfect. Now, you can cook food to make it, you know, last longer and give them more of a bonus. But right now, of course, you just have food. As you can see, that guy is giving out water. The water master, Azrael Dreamer. Steve Pitt Dreamer. Oh, it's Rob Pierce and Steve Pierce. But yeah, we need more people. We'll work on that. The village must grow. We're going to get an ancillary down, I think. Are we getting anything else? Just having a quick look around. Chest. Where do I want to be? Chest. Okay. I might delete that tower at the back. I'm not too sure. It does give helpful support, at least. This is spreading. There's a lot more graves and things down here now. This attack tonight is going to be a big one. Now there are also different phases of the moon. There's like a full moon where everything is quiet I think. And then there's a blood moon where blood uh, slimes spawn everywhere. Literally everywhere. It's nasty. Blood starts pouring, slimes appear. You know, like bases can be wiped out during a blood moon so be advised having towers in random places is good early on for blood moons until you get like a golem force up and running. Of course, right now, we still do, in fact, need to actually get our golem production up and running. Now, if you really need to, you can, of course, go guards for night time. Like I said, you can get barracks and an outpost. A barracks does have a defensive ballista on it, so that's kind of useful. But there you go. So, you can, of course, get these down, but you do need cryolithium. And unless you unlock a chest... At the beginning, you won't have access to Crylithium, so it's a bit of an issue. Of course, you do have magic bolts if you need to. You can shoot bolts yourself, you can shoot meteors, you can do earthquakes. You can banish enemies. Banish enemies is very powerful for a massive group in one space, say a maze. But the thing is, it randomly gets rid of them. Like, it will could send them to the end of the map, or somewhere else within your base. So Banish is powerful if you're about to lose the gate. But it could also screw you over in the long term. But again, Banish is one of the more powerful ones out there, because Fireballs do damage, Magic Bolts do damage, but Banish will get rid of them. But not always in the places you want them to be. That tower needs to be upped a bit more. Let's just grab Mana and Wood. As you can see, more Mana is coming out of the trees as I tear them apart. There we are. That will give my builders some extra wood, which they kind of need. Perfect. So we have 25 spaces. We have 20 people. That's good. We have wood available. They're building more arrows. We're having a maintaining of 10 in the storage. They've got none. It's not raining. That's fine. We can upgrade that. And we have no extra people for that. Mm. Okay, that's going up. That'll be more houses. Mostly think of getting another farm down. You need to make sure you have food because nothing will grow during winter. So your objective of this is to survive mainly winter and summer. Summer it gets very hot and your water can dry up so you need a good supply of water. And winter it gets very cold, your people could freeze to death and all your crops stop growing. So 
You need to make sure you have water and housing for summer and food and housing for winter. Also during winter, your water will freeze. So you need a massive supply of food and a massive supply of water. Now each person can go through a lot of food. You're looking at least, I don't know, let's go like three to four pieces of food per person per day. So you want to keep on building it up, keep on growing it. Get in more farmers when you feel like they're not contributing. Like when you get like three farms, I'd say maybe get a second one. Four farms, definitely get a second one. But early on, you don't need to fill it up. Like I'm using one farm and as you can see, he's doing perfectly okay. These houses got food, he's doing fine. But yeah, you don't need too much food early on. Like happiness boost, health regen. As you can see, he's getting an extra boost every time. Of course, if I'd gone for the high occupancy, it wouldn't have given me any of this happiness boost or the health regen extra. It'd, just be, it'd still be happiness boost and one health regen. But of course, it depends on how you're doing it. Because let's face it, sometimes you need your people active faster. But that depends entirely upon your playstyle. I'd rather have less people who are more active than more people who are less active. Everyone gets really badly injured and then spends the next day or so recovering. It does stop. But there you are. It's how it goes. Okay, we have an extra f three slots available. Or do you use one already? Oh yeah, for the farm. So I do need an ancillary down, I think. Ancillaries are also secondary storages. Not got much storage space, but they do have some storage space. Let's build you here? Question mark. Actually, I didn't check. Maintenance buildings, not just yet. Nope, go away. Okay, so we need manufacturing. We need a tumbler. Why is that so far away? Okay, so we need to delete that over there as well, that's in the way. So you want to change how this size is, there's like a bit in the corner, you can make it larger, you can make it smaller. You can change it to a square. So you can change the size of the brush when you're destroying things, it is very useful for certain stuff, obviously. I hear combat, why do I hear combat? But we do need more people. I could, I'm going to get rid of a builder, because I kind of need them to start making and maintaining, see this? It's maintaining and making nothing to maintain unlimited boards. We need boards for the next level of upgrade. Like, I still can't build golems until I get the crystal stuff down. It's something you need to look at, but you need boards to make crystal. And, of course, you need crystal and crylithium to go on. Now, if you actually look at refining... Oh, yeah, there you are. This actually needs cut stones. So, you need to then get the stones up and running, too. So... Crystillary takes a while, because of course you are currently trapped by the amount of people you have going on. Go away. I'm going to get rid of one of the people working here, obviously. I might get rid of one of the people working at the boyers. You currently, you can happily move people around. It's where you feel they'd be the most useful. Don't feel like they're trapped there forever. Like as you can see here, we've got a lot of food. Maybe I want another farmer. Maybe I want to build a storage building. Like you have specific storage buildings, as you can see. And you also have generic stuff. But yeah, I'd recommend getting storage buildings down for your food as soon as humanly possible. Which I'm actually going to do now I think about it. Right there, yeah, let's have a food storage here next to the houses. As you can see that phantom dark tower is... So you can upgrade things. After a while the upgrade will start giving them elemental bonuses. Now, I highly recommend not having everything as fire if you have a lot of elementals attacking you. Because obviously they don't take much damage from fire. Have a good nice healthy mix. Ice is good because it freezes things. Fire is good because it burns things. And there's obviously poison damage too which is pretty good. But of course you want to make sure you get a good mixture for how you feel. Although I nearly always go fire and ice. Because it's a song of fire and ice, of course. But yeah, I recommend getting a storage up for your food. When you start looking at the beginning of summer. 
You'll definitely have needed one probably a bit before this, but that depends on if you have a second farmer currently going. As you can see by my food stores, I only have like 34 currently available. Let's actually have my second farmer go over here. I need to destroy this at some point. It's now in the way of the other farm. But yes, you want to make sure you do have a storage going up and running. If you really feel the need, I could get a water storage as well. Water storage is always a good thing. Small trashy slime. Ah, that's why slimes are appearing. Apparently trash spawns trash slimes. That's new. That is very new. So that's why you get rid of the trash, because otherwise you get trash slimes. Okay. We haven't got we haven't got a bit of trash. We have like uh, yeah, obviously rocky trash. So we're gonna start cubing it, I feel. Suspicious trash. But yeah, we're getting the food and storage up and running. We have a bit of magic defences. Mostly it will be about slowly upgrading your gear. You definitely need to start getting some planks up and running, the boards. And you do want to start making sure you are heading towards getting your crystal harvestry down. Again, the crystal harvestry is very important. Do I want to build you here? Yeah, why not? I'll build you here. Then we can harvest straight away. But you do want to start looking at, even now or next one, at building defensive walls to stop the enemy just walking through your zone. Which I will start building now. I'm going to actually have a light pit over here. They can still see what's going on. Again, these will give me area. And I can start building defensive walls to stop the enemy just walking straight into my base. Which is actually very important. Of course, I want to get the crystal harvestry down first before I forget I've run out of space. Of course I have. I can get the ancillary down. Yeah, get that down to there. Start building it ourselves. But yeah, always make sure you're keeping up with what you need. Make sure you have the important things first. Like, I don't really need the wall to be up straight away. I don't really need to see around the wall. But it's very important you actually have the space. So once you start looking at your running out of buildings, get an ancillary down or look at upgrading. As you can see here, it is now finally asking for boards. At that stage, if you haven't begun producing from the makeshift lumber mill, you should have at least one or two ancillaries up. So I'm a little bit behind on ancillaries. I'm going to get one up over here, I'll get another one up over the other side, and we should be fine. Let's actually get another one up and running anyway, let's get another ancillary. I'd like to have you here, let's say, yeah. Uh... Let's have you here. There we go, got an ancillary just there. So two of these give me more space, but we'll of course use up my ancillary slots. And again, you get one more ancillary for every level of your central camp. So be advised on that. Once you've got your ancillaries up and running, which you should have a little bit before me, I am behind on that. You can start building walls. Like I say, you can build walls straight away, but they block line of influence. And depending on what you're doing, that is a major thing. Because if you wall yourself out, you can, of course, delete the wall. Yeah, you can, of course, just delete the wall. But, let's see. Uh... But then, of course, you have to wait for your people to go over there. There's a high chance people just come through. So you have to be careful about that. Let's, delete, let's do this. Get rid of those two. And this will force the enemy, because they can't go through here, to go round this way. Now, it may not be major, but here's the beginning of our area. We've got a defensive area to stop them coming through. They'll come round over to here. And, of course, we also have these down here, so we can still see after we seal it up. Which I'm going to make sure this one gets built, because otherwise it might get built afterwards. Give me some essence. Thank you. There we are. 
I said, the longer you hold a piece of material in your hand, the more mana or essence you use. So it's advisable to do it as fast as possible, otherwise you yeah, destroy terrain, I know that. Otherwise you get this issue where you run out of essence and you just drop the item wherever you currently are. So be careful about that too. So yeah, you do want to make sure you're just grabbing and moving as fast as possible. There we go, the wall's slowly going up, defences are going up too. And of course they will now be going round here. It's not a maze! But it is the beginning of making the enemy go where I want them to. Again, no elementals will fire over this. So you may want to have your defences slowly move forward. Like This could be a very good time right now to get defences up and running. Now let's get me the harvester down. To there. And there you go, we have the harvester down. Not really much space for defence, we could probably put one over here, we could put one over there, let's say. But it gives me the basis of that. So make sure you have defences being prepped for night 4, night 5, let's say. Because the enemy is starting to be a bit tougher. And of course you haven't yet got the golems active. But you should have some basic defences up and running at the very least. But either way, I've been the Fallen Shogun, this is another how-to video. We'll carry on and teach you how to survive even greater defences. I highly recommend having fun playing and not trying Nightmare first like I usually do. Either way, ciao for now, people. Bye-bye.